What's going on here? I got another reaction video here. This one is entitled How Schools Are Dumbing Down Young Students in America. Thomas Soul Archives. I'll leave a link of this video underneath. Appreciate you guys. Like, subscribe, and share. Hope, hope you like this video. Described uh, the American education system, I think from top to bottom, including colleges, uh, as being in terrible shape. They, uh, they are. And why is that? Other than the standards being relaxed. That's not true at all colleges, for instance. I don't think. Hmm. Oh, you, you, can uh, you can graduate probably from any college in the Ivy League, or Stanford for that matter. I, I haven't checked the requirements, but I suspect you can graduate without uh, having taken a single course in, course in math, in economics, in history, or in any hard science. Uh, I think Brooke Shields created a sensation with, with uh, things that she hadn't studied when she got a degree from Princeton. That wasn't special treatment for, for Brooke Shields. Really? Anybody can graduate from Princeton as an ignoramus. Mm -hmm. Now, if they really want to learn something, they can also learn an awful lot at Princeton. Mm -hmm. But it's entirely up to them. Well, what about elementary and secondary education? They're, they're disastrous as well. Oh. Uh, one of the biggest problems is one that doesn't get talked about, but which is really at the heart of it all. The people who go into teaching are really the, low, the lowest level of college students. If you look mm. at the test scores of people who major in education compared to people who major in, in history, uh, science, anything else virtually, uh, they're at or near the bottom and have been for something like half a century. Well, what would you do? <clears throat> if, you were, uh, it, it, if you had taken the post of, of education secretary and President Reagan came to you and said, Tom, whatever you want, I'm going to be for. Uh, I would say, well, all right, you, you, uh, you've, uh, you've broken the airline uh, uh, con air controllers union, break the NEA, uh, and, uh, and make, make teaching non-union. Now, that would probably do more than wow. any, any other single step that you could do. Well, what would be step one? Oh, Thomas Sowell is freaking, he, this dude is smart, man. I, man, this, and this guy, is, he's hated, too, by, like, different part, different cultures in, in America. But the dude is smart. Like, he backs his stuff up with facts. He's an economics genius bro like his studies what he, he actually studies the stuff he and he's an economics like professor major or whatever i don't know exactly a doctor or whatever i'm not sure what he is but he backs his stuff up with facts bro two step number two would be to hire people uh, oh then step number two would be to abolish all education schools mm -hmm. I, I have argued that if, if we were to spend them uh, a million dollars getting every professor of education to retire mm -hmm. uh, and not hire any more it would be the most productive money we have ever spent for real wow for real man like that there would be so much money left over What's the matter with education professors? Oh, you obviously don't know any of them. I don't. <laughs> oh, the, the stuff is, is unbelievably childish. I get emails uh, from time to time from people who are in education schools saying, I can't believe the drivel they're teaching us here. Mm. And, and should I complain to the dean? And so I said, no, don't complain to the dean. Mm -hmm. What you're getting is the norm in schools of education. Wow. One of the reasons the schools are so bad. But see, the people in schools of education pay no price. For, for, for miseducating students. Uh, it is not society that is forcing these people to do this. These people have been looking for ways of evading academic work for generations. Oh, no. The when you teachers, say the administrators, they love anything that is non-academic. Why? Uh, you, there have been studies done of kids in uh, 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 schools and departments of education. Man, I've said this before, dude. The education system, the school system is dumbing down our kids. It's making our culture it's dumbing us down like what are they teaching transgender studies and all that stuff now why do we need why do our kids need to know that that's <sighs> they love anything that's non-academic when you get into role playing and all this kind of thing mm -hmm. and i think it's perfectly understandable you get the dregs of the act and this is years ago that this guy's talking about this imagine how far it's gotten since then world becoming teachers you have education courses that repel able students from ever studying the subject no and so you've why them off at the pass anyone who has any ability does not want to take these ridiculous courses in college and of the few who are, who are hardy souls who go on and, and take it and suffer through them and become teachers those with high ability are the first ones to drop out and real quick like why do they even have these these useless degrees in the market? Why not just have degrees that are useful in the market? Accounting, teaching, uh, uh, technology, engineering. The ones that are going to make you money when you finish college. Not like, what is it, uh, liberal arts degree. Like, what? You're wasting your money on that. And these, these colleges are like, oh yeah, take that one. That one's cool. 
In a very few years out of the class, you have the bottom half of the class now has tenure, and the top half is going somewhere else. No. Well, the phrase is dumbing down. Uh, What's so ironic is the school is failing so miserably in what they are paid to do mm -hmm. that they should take on this role of being social philosophers. A lot of these programs are really a substitute for hard work by the teachers. I mean, when, when I, I think of the teachers I had, they could not have cared less Bare what I minimum, bro. about myself. Bare minimum. They asked me, how, how did you get to school? Did you walk the these 15 and it sucks because like I've been in the teaching field I've used to be a substitute teacher I taught for a little bit and I still teach till today on this channel there are people that wa actually want to teach you know but the the demands that the school the independent that the school districts have on those teachers is like there, there's there's little room for teaching you know what I mean the, you're, you're worried about test scores you're worried about different things it's like no we don't as teachers we don't want to worry about that stuff that's why a lot of teachers like private school or private tutoring you know blocks from because home. because they still get a chance to actually teach and do what they love or did you have money for the trolley they couldn't have cared less they wanted to make sure I had better have my homework when I got there and it better be right Mm. The great problem with education throughout is that people are not accountable. They can run those schools to indulge themselves, whether for whatever fed they like, uh, for whatever way they like to teach, and that mm. goes all the way through to the colleges. Mm. Teachers have been a very organized group since the, since the 1960s, and the National Education Association is all in favor of these crazy things that have been criticized here this morning by me and by others. Uh, so that uh, they have, and in fact, that's what choice is all about, is it about putting the parents and the taxpayers and the general public in charge yes. and not allowing these little groups to create their own little fiefdoms where they do what they please oh. regardless of what the rest of us think. For real, man. Let the kid give control to the parents. Let them put their kids into whatever kind of school. Give the money back to the parents instead of you know taking it from them in taxes. Give, it, give the money to the parents and let them school their kids however they see fit. No, don't let, like the fiefdoms like he's talking about like what do we have like uh you know the people that push tra transgender studies or lgbtq or whatever it is pushing you know those fiefdoms like a fiefdom is like a small little group of people that have like a like an little small empire underneath whatever they're teaching and they're controlling it they're the ones that are pushing their agenda onto the school system and they push it onto their kids it's like dude no our taxpayer money is going to this no like give us back that money let us put the, that money that we're giving in taxes to the school education system let us put our own money to our own kids uh, school to, to their college you know what i mean what, what, what are your views on ed educational equity? Well, what is educational equity? So uh, it's always nice to know what it is what I'm talking about. Mm. <laughs> uh, the, the notion that uh, school districts are not receiving equal funding per capita per student. Uh, I, I, I think that we should uh, equalize if only to get rid of that phrase. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I, and I seriously think that uh, there's something to be said for getting that issue off the table because it is a total red herring. Mm -hmm. But it's gonna, as long as, as long as you don't have equalized spending in the school, that is gonna be blamed as one of the reasons for the other things. Mm. And so you wanna get rid of it. As a, little, don't, there's a ton of evidence suggests the amount of money really doesn't uh, make much difference. In Washington, D.C., they have some of the highest expenditures per pupil and some of the lowest scores in the country. Oh. In fact, a few years ago, I saw some data uh, on the different states. Of the five top states at that time, and it may still be true, mm -hmm. in test scores, all were below the national average in expenditure per pupil. And we're putting all our money into this, and the, te the test scores are lower. Where's the money going to? Our kids aren't learning. The test scores... It's ridiculous, bro. Uh, Palo Alto High School has six tennis courts, some of which I've used, even though I never went to Palo Alto High School. Uh, they have a swimming pool, a baseball field. I mean, they're all the works. Now, none of that does anything for education. Mm. It's, it's part of their lifestyle, and they want to keep it fun. <laughs> but uh, no, I to consider your own lifestyle. Like I grew up in South Texas. When I live, when I live high school, and even thinking back, it's like, dude, what did I learn? All I learned was what the other kids were learning, which is what they were watching at home. MTV it was a big thing at the time. Like you just learn culture at school. You know, it's not really a place that you learn stuff. You learn, but you learn the things that you that are like aligned with culture. You don't learn like actual 
the, the you know the constitution or you know how to do mathematics well or how to read well like it's just it, it it's a big mess like i i learned like when i got to college i had to take remedial reading classes because i didn't know how to really read that well i didn't understand what i was reading so i had to take remedial classes i had to use the dictionary when i was reading my college textbook for every other word basically to figure out it was a struggle reading when i got to college i think that issue ought to be off the table i was just curious about what you think of uh, nicholas sure. lemon's thesis in his new book the big test i haven't read the book well what what, what is his thesis he, he questions uh, the new meritocracy that has emerged with the use of uh, the, uh, he, he would probably use the scare quotes around the term objective uh, test of academic aptitude. And compared to what? Mm -hmm. Well, that's my question, really. <laughs> that's the question the economists always ask. Mm -hmm. uh, compared to what? Mm -hmm. There's a story that, that someone, a friend, yeah, I love Thomas a friend, a friend in the street, and his friend said, how are you? How's your wife? And he said, compared to what? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, nothing is easier than, than, than to prove that something human is, has imperfections. Mm. Uh, I'm amazed how many people devote themselves to that task. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, obviously, people, if, if you're going to base self-esteem on performance, it cannot be equal, because performance is never going to be equal. Right. So all you can get in terms of self-esteem theme is make-believe equality oh <laughs> you could tell him that it's make it's you could tell him right but it, in in the back of the mind it's it's make-believe it's not real because it's true like there are people that are better than you simple as that i'm a guitarist classical guitarist you know used to play a lot when i was in college there's people that are better than me and i'm like dang i'll never get to that level or and then there's people that are lower than me like wow they're there, you could tell, you know what I mean? You could tell that their level is a little bit lower than yours. There's no equal equality in performance. Schools as they grade. You can meet your match, you know what I mean? That's that's the whole thing centered around like like fighting UFC or boxing. Whenever there's a match, they the guys have they weigh the same weight. They're the same match. That's why it makes it interesting because they're they're same size and they're matching each other doing a duel off or whatever, you know? Same thing with sports all around, you know? Uh, in many cases, not on the objective result, but on how you did relative to what the teacher thinks your ability was. And so you may do a wonderful job, and they say, well, you know, he really was a very, he's a very bright kid. He could have done mm -hmm. better than that. And so he gets a B. And the other student, uh, who really did a lousy job, but you know, it was a big struggle for him even to do that. And so he gets the B plus. Mm -hmm. And of course, what that means is that the whole grading system just becomes meaningless and confusing. The vision of cosmic justice is very beneficial to the people who hold it, even if it's not beneficial to those whom it's intended to benefit. Mm. And I think that's one of the reasons that are, people are so reluctant to give it up, because they feel wonderful. I'm sure that if we, we had had the kinds of teachers that we have today, mm -hmm. uh, and they had lowered the standards to all of us as we were coming through the school, and we all ended up by going out into the world foredoomed to failure, yeah. those teachers would have felt wonderful about themselves. Oh, they no. Said, hey, we're not leaning on these poor kids kids, we're taking into account that they come from backgrounds that are deprived. Mm. I mean, and particularly in education, this is devastating because mm. it's been shown again and again that in one generation, people can do remarkable things with a decent education. Mm. Uh, uh, but they're not going to be done as long as third parties think that the purpose of the educational system is to make them feel good about themselves. Oh, no. So what are some third parties of today? The only thing I could think of is that, that they're pushing you know uh, kids thinking about sex that they're teaching sexual education at a young age the who's who's benefiting from that the people that are pushing that agenda or the the, the the people that are saying oh a man can be a woman they're putting that in the college like who's that benefiting just so that the lgbtq whatever plus community wants to feel good about themselves and they're sacrificing the education education of future citizens that's that's selfish that's the only way i can think about it the people at the bottom are so badly off that they have practically nothing to lose. Um, one of the great disgraces of American education, far more important than the differences in spending, uh, is the way teachers are allocated. 
that is typically teachers start out in, 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 in a good middle class school, and it turns out they're awful, they'll be moved on to another school, and mm. another, and eventually they'll start moving them down the social ladder. Oh. Neighborhoods where the parents are less educated, less affluent, less wow. less able to make trouble. That's messed up, bro. I saw that a lot too in the school system where I was working, I was as a substitute teacher. They got clicks among teachers. Among among administration, school administration teachers, they got their favorite teachers. What what do they give the favorite teachers? They give them the nice kids, the the kids whose families, you know, parents actually care about their education. The teachers that they don't like, oh, you get the bad kids. That's messed up, dude. That's so messed up. What you do with the teacher? If an administrator doesn't like you, and this is in every area of every area of work. You know, even in my area, if 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 a boss doesn't like you, bro, you get the crappy jobs. If you're not a suck up, if you're not a kiss up to them, you get the sucky jobs. That's just how it is. Education system as well. It shouldn't be that way because it it like Thomas Sowell is saying here, man, this dude is so smart. And it turns out they're awful. They'll be moved on to another school. Mm -hmm. And eventually they'll start moving them down the social ladder. To neighborhoods where the parents are less educated, less affluent, less influential, less able to make trouble. Mm. Uh, and so they end up teaching those kids for whom education is their only road out of poverty. Right. Uh, in Cali well, not only in California. I saw that too. Like, even when I went into the, the schools, like I went, I was, went to, I was a substitute teacher and one of the schools that I used to go to, which was like the poor side of town, right? And, and you can see the difference, like the, 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 the they're they're my culture, you know what I mean? They're Hispanic, and they see somebody like me come in, that's a male too. Like that's a big thing, and you could see their faces like light up, like oh shoot, this guy's he talks like us, you know what I mean? There's a there's a sense of like hope, you know what I mean? Like oh we can do something, we can make it, you know? Because they get out of school, what do they see? Parents could be on drugs, parents could always be on their social media, parents are not even in their life, you know what I mean? And just that little ray of hope is, is helpful, man. California, but elsewhere, this constant shuffling of teachers around, which mm -hmm. is done, by the way, simply because of the high cost of firing them. When I wrote oh. a book on education a few years ago, I said it was $50,000 to fire one incompetent teacher. Wow. That has now been more than doubled. Oh, wow. That. Uh, and so they move them around. And in fact, this happens so much that there are even names for this. It's called the Dance of the Lemons. Oh, wow. Or, or the Turkey Trot. The Turkey <laughs> Trot. Differences. And the educational system, coast to coast, is mm -hmm. bitterly set against any form of ability grouping, any form of accommodating to kids who have higher ability. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of, the, one of the studies I saw, there was a kid who was... Wow. In the is he saying, like that this this stifles the ones that do have higher ability to con to 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 be further up and learn more and get get stuff done better you know what i mean or so everybody's so there's a high a higher ability learner there's a lower ability learner so they're bringing them to equal why would you do that to a student on either side grade and he could score above the national average on the college board sat in math and so it was suggested to the principal that this kid should be given something other than fourth grade math. Mm -hmm. And the principal reacted and he said, no, that would be a violation of social justice. Oh, no. Why? <sighs> Let that kid thrive, dude. Oh, he's got, he's better than me. So we got to bring him down here. Dumb, selfish. That is selfish. One of the things that protects American education is the, is the fact that American universities are, in fact, leading universities of the world. But that's very misleading. Because some of these universities are so good that it's very hard for American college students to get into them. And, and if you uh, separate out the various fields and you go from the silliest and simplest, like such as education, all the way over to the other end of the spectrum, math and engineering and science, you find that the percentage of the PhDs which go to Americans are the highest over here in education, sociology, psychology, etc. And then as you proceed across the spectrum, that percentage declines mm -hmm. until finally you get over to mathematics and engineering, where less than half. Why is it? Why is it last? Like it should be first.
is awarded at American universities. 50%. And so what we really have are international universities on American soil, supported by American taxpayers, mm. with a very large component of foreign professors and students. Oh. Um, and so, and this is what is used to justify the American educational system. But uh, of course, the kids who come here from elsewhere come here with, with much stronger backgrounds. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, surprised recently to learn that uh, out in Silicon Valley, they're actually recruiting engineers from Russia and India, mm. not because they're necessarily better than American engineers. Why is that? But because they speak English better. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so crazy. Uh, parents play a role, and the teachers cannot play the only role in the education of students. Mm -hmm. um, how can cosmic justice be created in an atmosphere where parents have not created um, a conducive learning atmosphere? Mm. Uh, I think, you're, as they say in the law, you're assuming a fact, not an evidence. I know this is one of the great beliefs in the educational establishments, that all problems in the educational establishment are caused outside the educational establishment. Mm. Uh, the evidence on that is not compelling. And what is especially not compelling is the determined effort of the NEA and other parts of the educational establishment to prevent this belief from being put to a test. If it is the case that the problems are all outside the system, they're in the parents, mm. then why do they fight bitterly against all forms of choice and vouchers? Oh. Which would allow you to find out that if we take the same kid with the same parents, watching presumably the same television programs as he always watched and so on, having the same attitudes, mm -hmm. and transfer him over into a parochial school or some other kind of school, uh, why don't we find out whether that, whether in fact he will not improve at all because it's not, it was never the school's fault in the first place. Mm. Uh, the bitterness of, the, of this, these battles uh, are hard to exaggerate. Uh, in, in California, they would they sent so-called true squads around when people were trying to uh, sign up uh, petitions to get this issue on the ballot. And some of these people were, were, were not above using intimidation tactics to prevent people from signing. No. Uh, in New Jersey, one of the big companies, I think it was, Pe it was Pepsi Cola, was prepared to give scholarships to low-income kids to go, go from the public schools into the private schools. They were so bitterly opposed to this that suddenly Pepsi-Cola machines in the schools began to be vandalized and uh, Pepsi had to back off its offer. No. So if it is in fact the case that all these problems originate outside the school system, why then are they not willing to put that belief to the test? Mm. Thank you very much. Yes, Mr. Soul, Dr. Yeah. Thomas Soul, bro. Man, for real, dude. I've been saying for real since just recently that like, the school system is... I wish I wish that more parents could homeschool their kids. Uh, we homeschool our kids. That 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 we, I wish that we could have our own money, that our money that's going in taxes to to education. I wish we didn't have to pay that, and we get to keep that money so that we can continue, so we can put it into our kids' homeschooling. Uh, I live in the state of Texas. It's it's really the homeschooling thing is awesome here um that the regulations super awesome here in texas and yeah the, i the reason why i say that's because i have personal experience with the school system and, and i'm add adhd i was diagnosed at, at and as a teenager in middle school people like myself were bullied in school because because of how our mind is you know what i mean we're bullied for reasons of that we're we're naturally this is the way we are and our culture is and we're smart too like definitely we can we're smart in our own way but we're just not socially accepted because of how we are we don't get social cues and people think that we're, we're strange at a young age even as kids we we realize that oh there's something you know so you're bullied because of it you know what i mean you're bullied and bullied and bullied and eventually what happens boom it pops off dude something happens you made that's why that's why I liked football. I was in football because I was able to take out some of that aggression on the football field. I was able to to hit, to hit, and 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 like all, I had all this bottled up energy, bottled up emotions, and just you know when I would go out and play sports, I would get that aggression out in that sense. And football was one of them. And I would you know just hit people really hard, as hard as I could, and that was it. That was an aggression uh, reliever for me because i know i had to go to school the next day and be bullied 
You know what I mean? All through middle school, high school. And then, I, of course, I started smoking marijuana. That was helping my relax my mind from all the troubles and all the people that are around in school. You know what I mean? It's not, no, it wasn't the greatest escape, but it, it helped me at the time. That's so I thought, you know, and then eventually I stopped smoking because I knew it was affecting me socially, like to, to go and get a job and do the things that the normal things that I'm supposed to do. You know, then I got saved and got in Jesus Christ and all that stuff. And, the, and my, my life has changed since then. And knowing who I am in Christ has also helped me to learn that, okay, I'm being bullied by this person. And, and looking at it from a spiritual aspect, like, okay, do unto others as, as they have done, to, done unto you. They're egotistical. I started studying about narcissism and how narcissists can take advantage of somebody like me, you know, and... It's just a long story, man. If you guys like this reaction video, stay tuned for some more. Appreciate you guys. Bye.